Hi and welcome to Dear Andy, where every week at SI.com we answer your college football and antitrust law questions. Let's get right to this week's bunch. Our first is a good one from at he obi she bama, also known as Roll Tide War Eagle. What did college football playoff coordinator Bill Hancock mean when he said that quote unquote geography would be a factor in selecting the college football playoff teams? Well, that means a couple of things depending on where your team is in the pecking order. Remember, the college football playoff is replacing the BCS. It's not just that four team tournament, it's also the other big money bowls. The college football playoff selection committee is selecting the teams for those bowls as well and setting those matchups. So, Geography will factor in in a couple of ways. In the four-team tournament itself, geographical consideration is supposed to go to the higher seeded team. So if, for example, one of your teams, either Alabama or Auburn, is the number one overall seed, they're going to the Sugar Bowl. They'll get the, the closer of the two potential options for a semifinal. So it's either the Sugar Bowl or the Rose Bowl this year, so they would go to the Sugar. That should work in most cases, but it could get a little dicey at times. For example, let's say that Charlie Strong does a great job, Texas makes the playoff, is the number one seed. Well, obviously, Austin's closer to New Orleans than it is to Los Angeles. They're in the Sugar Bowl. But what if the fourth seed is LSU? Now they're essentially playing a home game against the higher seeded team. This is the type of thing that yeah, we love to complain about because we like to complain about anything. But for the most part, it should work out that the higher seeded teams get to play closer to home, their fans have a shorter trip, and they have more of a quote-unquote home field advantage. In the other games, this year it'll be the Cotton, the Fiesta, the Orange, and the Peach Bowl. The idea is they want better matchups so that you have something a little better to watch, and then so it's a little easier for fans to get to the game. Let's hope it works out that way. Our next question comes from Jordan, and he asks, Will you be surprised if the Houston Cougars have the best record of any Texas team this year? This is a great question, Jordan, and no, I would not be surprised if the Cougars wind up having the best record of any of the Lone Star State teams this year. This is a pretty good team, bringing back John O'Corn and Deontay Greenberry, probably one of the best quarterback receiver tandems in America, and schedule-wise, it's not that bad. As for the rest of the state of Texas, Baylor probably has a great chance at a double-digit win record. They're coming off a Big 12 title, they bring back Bryce Petty, bring back Antoine Goodley. That defense should be better. But the thing about Baylor and Texas and TCU and Texas Tech, they all have to play each other. They all have to play Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. That's going to be pretty hard. Texas A&M, they're in the SEC West. They have to play Alabama and Auburn and LSU and an improving Ole Miss and a pretty good Mississippi State. And oh, by the way, on the first night of the season, they have to go to South Carolina. So yeah, I think Houston's probably set up as well as anybody in the Lone Star State. Our final question comes from Auburn Elvis, one of our favorite Twitter friends. He's been watching the O'Bannon trial, paying attention. He wonders if colleges can figure out how to give patent revenue to inventors who are also students at the school, couldn't they figure out how to pay players? It's an interesting question because when dealing with folks on Twitter talking about the subject of compensating college football players with something beyond tuition room and board, people often say, well, if you're a grad assistant working in a lab at a school and you invent something, the school gets to keep it. Well, that's not entirely true. That's up to the school. They all have their own individual policies. There is no, dare I say, cartel creating rules that cover all of them. They're pretty much on their own to figure it out, and schools have figured it out. For example, I called up the policy of one school, and here's what it says. If you're the inventor, you get 35%. The school gets the rest and then divvies it how it sees fit. That policy applies to full-time faculty, part-time faculty, students, postdoctoral fellows, and basically anybody else who would use university resources in the course of their research and invention process. Now what is the name of this fly-by-net institution that gives away 35%? Harvard. So the next time somebody tells you that it would be too hard to figure out how to pay college athletes beyond tuition room board, that it's just a Gordian knot that just cannot be deciphered, just remember, smart people figure out 
how to pay for things that the market wants every day. If they wanted to figure this out badly enough, they would. For SI.com, I'm Andy Staples.